What's up, people? Welcome to Fill Your Cup Podcast. We got our tea filled up in our cups right now. And it's your boy, Spence Crosby, a.k.a. Faiska. William O. Taylor, New Wave Coaching. What's going on? And Tyler's Wellness here, helping open-minded individuals every single day, making money online. All right, guys, now we got the intros out the way. Let's go ahead and drink up uh, our cup of tea. I apologize for the last podcast. Um, I didn't have the tea available for us just because I was I was kind of lazy, and I got tired of drinking the same old shit. You get tired of that, man. Doing the same things lazy, over and Spence. over. I know, Why man. Why you lazy, Dang. man? Come on, we need tea, man. These people need tea in their cup. And that's the whole point. Fill Your Cup podcast. Like, what are you doing? This is Fill Your Cup. We're, We're not, filling our minds. That's know. real. Thank you, Tyler, for saving me from that because Will just came for me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's go ahead and take a sip and see how you like it. All right. Mmm. That's not bad. Bougie tea. The spice in there? Yeah. yeah. So I got uh this is a red raspberry blend uh with uh turmeric and ginger and I got some of course the black pepper to help with the absorption. But we're not going there right now. A little spice? A little spice, a little spice. I made a little blend today. Um but today guys I want to talk about religion and science. And before you turn our podcast off, we're not gonna make this boring. We're gonna oh, I don't want to talk about this. We're gonna make it a little spicy. We want to basically break down religion and science to a point. How does it appeal to you? What is it to you? Um, are they the same? Why are they uh, supposedly squared against different? You know what I mean? Like in the USA, like religion and science are separate from each other. Um, we're going to talk about the history and all, all of that stuff. But guys, talk to me about religion and science. Um, go ahead. Any, any takers, go ahead. Knock it out. Religion and science, man. Two phenomenal known aspects of the world uh dating back forever man since we've been here i mean it's been a long time religion and science uh i can say from my experience you know growing up uh going to catholic not catholic school but what baptist you know being in the church going up having the family influence i definitely feel like being religious had a really positive impact on my life because it allowed me uh, a guidebook, you know, a Bible, you know, there were kids who didn't have that type of stuff. And I could see we had separated morals, you know, I go to church and it kind of set me on a good course and gave me a good pre prerequisite to what was right and what was wrong. Uh, so that's my experience from religion. Uh, so you do you as think of where I my background? Yeah. So do you think re religion played a positive impact in your life early on? I definitely do. I definitely do. Uh, it just set me up for success, you know, positive things, things that are right. And uh, yeah, that's what I can say from that. All right, Tyler, what do you think, man? Uh, personally, I grew up, went to a Catholic school. You know, that was the majority of uh, my younger upbringing there, you know, up through eighth grade. And then, uh, you know, I would agree. It's kind of like it gives you a little like set, you know, morals or guidelines, you know, not saying that people that don't have a religion don't have morals. It's just we don't always recognize what our morals are unless you had like a strong emphasis on a certain thing. And, and having that growing up, you know, it's repeated over and over. You got it in the mass messages. You got your teachers talking about the same thing all the time. You have a religion class. You're, you're literally just kind of being molded into a type of person, right? But then, you know, another thing that I've recognized as I grew up and, you know, you know, didn't go really to mass and stuff like that anymore is, you know, the other side like that there is some people out there that don't have like a like a guideline for their life you know they they think that um there's just a ton of things that are happening to them rather than like that they're creating these situations and a lot of the time it's, i think that a religion can help you you know realize that you have control right it's like you have the ability to do whatever you want for yourself but like through things like prayer and stuff like sending good vibes and stuff like that i'm more like say spiritual now than i would say religious and so I, I kind of say that they're all about the same, to be honest. So he sparked a couple of questions that I'm going to have. Um, but before I ask these two questions, I could definitely attest to the fact that, yeah, I grew up in a religious household. I mean, it was as bad as my mom whooping my ass if I didn't go to church. So <laughs> for real, uh, right? it was <laughs> y'all know people who are listening, y'all know how it is. So uh, especially growing up in the predominantly black household, you know, and that's what I am anyway, but. 
Definitely. Yeah, you know how you that ass was going to get whooped or your mom was like, yo, and you hated that six o'clock in the morning worship service. Like, why is this shit so loud? Why is he yelling? Why is he telling me to go visit God? I'm just trying to go to sleep. Can I visit God with my sleep, please? But anyways- I'll pray. <laughs> right. I'll pray. I'll pray. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Guys, uh, the question I want to ask- the other one will come back to me, but the one I wanted to ask was the difference between spirituality and being religious. Um, I think being spiritual has become more of a trending thing um, in these last 10 years. Um, people claim to be more spiritual. And then I see people that were like, I don't like that people say they're more spiritual. What does that mean? I think people are hate on the fact that when others say they're spiritual, they kind of take that as like an insult. Like, what do you mean you're more spiritual? Like, I'm spiritual too. So what does it mean to be spiritual? What does that mean? I'll hop on this one first. Uh, so one thing, again, that I recognize, you know, as I grew up and, you know, more identify with, say, the spiritual side, right, is that when you are on the more spiritual side, you recognize everything as a being, right? And just because someone doesn't believe in the same things as you, you still respect that and you respect their, their existence. And I recognize that while I was in the church, you know, a lot of the time people would diss on the people that weren't going to masses, weren't going to church and all these other things. And, you know, you're, you're like, you're learning these lessons about how to be the greatest person, how to help others and do all this stuff. But yet, you know, you're most likely the most judgmental, right? And so the spiritual community really is like, just recognizing everyone as a being and like, you know, more or less expressing those practices. Do you think, however, that the people that are religious, do you think it's more or less their belief or the belief system in place? Or do you think it's just the people? I think it's mostly the people. You know, uh, a lot of the time, you know, there is a lot more to it than just like the religion. There's a lot of influence in our lives. And, uh, you know, it depends on everything. You know, what are you consuming as far as media and what are you, you know, truly believing in? You know, like you can go to mass and you can re regurgitate what you're being, what, what, you're, what you're hearing, but do you actually believe in what you're hearing? Do you actually express that through your actions and thought? Will, what's your take? Uh, I definitely agree. Like Tyler saying, I've had periods in my life where I go to church and I notice that when I'm in church and I say I'm paying my tithes or whatnot, everything seems to be going good for me. Everything normally works out, uh, you know. Whatever I got to do, I'm, I'm making it through safe. Everything's kind of going my way. You know, I'm in tune. I feel like I'm in tune more. Um, and I definitely can also take away from what he's saying there. He's saying that kind of like in the church growing up, yeah, I do, I do feel the same way. Like you see and you learn small lessons that even the people in church, you know, they're talking about each other sometimes or, oh, she didn't show up for mass last Sunday or whatever. And then you kind of see, well, that's not really so good that, you, you know, so they're people, they're trying to say better themselves through uh, coming under, in the house of God and, you know, coming there. But are they being whole themselves? And that's just one kind of aspect of it, you know. And I think that uh, it kind of comes down to also like just being whole like yourself, like, you know, being whole yourself, whether that's spiritually um through religion or just in general, you know, because um, I noticed that I think that the thing that really helped me out was spending time in prayer, you know, spending time praying. Um, it was really mindful and it was really kind of allowing me to slow down and think and ask for the things that I wanted, you know, and to think about it and to, you know, call it out and ask for it, ask the universe for it, ask God for it. Um, and that really staying from there and having gratitude, oh, I'm grateful for my life and, uh, just kind of staying there more mentally. And then you go into church. So you're doing it there. You're praying, you're listening to the scripture, you know, you come out of church, you're feeling good too. You know, you might reflect on church on Wednesday or something. So you're kind of thinking, or you might pray throughout the week. And then you're kind of thinking in a good, good, good headspace, gratitude, you know, asking for things, praying for things, you know, trying to fix things that are going wrong. Um, okay, let me let me uh, yeah. let me ask this too. Well, let me make a uh, let me draw a conclusion for myself. I think the biggest thing I learned in life so far is uh, well, one of the biggest things I learned in life is 
I used to lambast the hell out of Christians all the time because I was like, yo, you're living hypocrite. You're telling me I should live my life like this, but you're not doing the same. And so I feel like a lot of people um, in the church are hypocrites. And I hated that. So it took me a couple people to come that I came across in my life that actually was like, yo, they're devout believers in Jesus Christ, their savior, and they know their word and they live it, most importantly. And I think that's the biggest discouragement for people is the fact that uh, you're not living that life. And so a lot of religious people don't live that life. So a lot of people have dismembered or not dismembered themselves, but detached themselves from that that body and say, you know, I'm more spiritually in, inclined. But you see, how I feel like a lot of people that's like in their early 20s all the way up to like their mid 30s, they're like, I'm more spiritually in tune. Um, with that though, I do feel like religion as a whole has served this purpose in terms of um, benefiting the world do you guys feel the same do you guys feel like it has benefited the world in a sense of like it kept the world in check because religion is used as a tool essentially to keep people in check you know what i mean the masses but the people who take the word to another level and actually live it that's where they have that liberation how do you guys feel about that i definitely uh, agree with that statement um you know religion does connect a lot of people and then again it's messages similar messages all throughout these different religions it's just like the same thing but said differently and sometimes you just have to hear it heard differently just to hit right and then once it does you know you have the message that you were supposed to receive anyway so for me it doesn't matter what your belief is as long as you have some type of guiding system some type of belief in general okay that's an interesting thought bro because you just sparked the idea in my mind of what i wanted to talk about so it's it's through a belief system, you know, that most of the time when we we get we come into this world, our belief system isn't one that we create ourselves. It's we we absorb it by the people that are around us, the environment that we're in. You know, say for instance, if I was born in America, it's okay. I could be Baptist. This is how I grew up. If I was born in a different place, maybe I could be you know, different religion or something, because just I'm there, you know, Buddhist or something, or uh, what are the other religions, bro? There's so many different religions. Yeah. I mean, there's different sects of Buddhism, Tendai, uh, Mahayana, yeah, so, uh, I could so be, many different sects. I could be from over there and also have religion and also have just that belief system that this is my religion and indoctrine in this religion. My whole family's practices religion for 20, 30 years the whole time. Um, and then I'm going to grow up and be that way. Also, I'm also going to believe those things. So I think that's a huge part of it, you know, is the belief system of the elders of the people who came before you, they pass it on to you and you indoctrinate it as your own and you, and you know, it is truth. Um, so yeah, belief system. I think that's a huge part of it there. I do feel like, uh, to add on to what Will was saying is, uh, the belief system I think is, it's essential in a sense of, uh, it kind of brings, it can bring clarity, but I think it's not religion's fault for being religion. It's the people's interpretation of religion that's really ruining and really fucking up religion. It's because they're not living that truth. You have people like that, what, that crypto dollar guy. He used all that money he got for, uh, through tithes and, uh, tithes and offerings to buy him a private jet. But I guess his claim was he's helping spread Christian's word to the world. Like, no, you need a private jet for that? I mean, you can reach people from across the world just using YouTube or Instagram, whatever. Um, but to kind of veer off from that subject and kind of tie into science, guys, um, science and religion to me is is essentially the same thing. Um, science just took religion out and religion just kind of took um, those questions out. When in reality, I feel like they're both in one and the same. And we're going to talk about cultures that have used religion and science together to usher in a renaissance. Guys, how do you feel about science? And how do you guys feel about its disconnect from religion? Uh, personally, this is you know one of the thoughts that I've had for a while now is um, it's kind of, again, kind of saying the same thing differently. For a lot of people, science is the seeing it and religion is the believing in it without seeing and so, you know, you got to, for some people, they need, quote unquote, more proof. So then 
it's like, well, what's proof of uh, that if I pray that this stuff will work? And then science will be like, all right, well, let's let's start talking quantum physics and metaphysical stuff and literally showing you atoms that they have all these electronic, uh, you know, pulls, negatives and positives and stuff like that. And then they can show you physical proof. And it, it's it's all about, again, like the same thing, just a different way to show you. Yeah, I definitely feel science is good. I also feel religion is good. Um, I just think that people, they get so indoctrinated in their beliefs with this religion, with this science, that it kind of, it blocks everything else from them or they stop learning. They could be learning something else that's also important, but they stop learning. No, this is the way it's always been. Uh, This is the truth. I learned this from my parents. We've been doing this for 50 years the whole time. And I know this is true. Or even scientists. Scientists can go way too far left. Science, everything science, no religion. Uh, you know, religion. They can say, oh, it's too much religion. You know, this was how this actually happened. And then they get too pulled into that. And I think what's important here is to kind of adopt more of a, uh, like Bruce Lee would say, like a style without styles, you know, and to be formless and to adapt more than anything. Um, but science is hot, man. Science is, you know, the technology. We need science. Uh, I also think that we need religion. Uh, they're both two important things, but I think that with the wrong understanding, they can be uh, misused and kind of abused, you know, and not for the good of humanity, but rather we're fighting and arguing about things that uh, we we shouldn't really argue and fight about, you know, they're here to help us. Um, I do. Uh, I just looked up, uh, the God particle. I forgot the name of it. It's called the boson Higgs Bogon, Bogon, boson. I'm sorry, but it's basically the God particle. And I guess the scientific community kind of acknowledged this existence of this. They also acknowledge the existence of dark matter. And so I think science is slowly, Western science more specifically is coming out of this, this ignorant hole of that religion is like, no, it shouldn't be with science. They're starting to acknowledge the metaphysical principles that has been present in religion since the dawn um, to be like, oh, we could use this. This is science, too, because it's both one and the same. And that's why I think uh, you take China's uh, rapid explosion into industry, I think in the early 1900s. When I think Japan had fucked up their society or whatnot, I forgot what China had did, but China really had a strong basis in their 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 religious philosophy, and I think that's what ushered in that renaissance so quickly. That's why they're able to uh, trump the world in the sense of their technology, but their their massive growth. Then China has been growing a lot, and they're still making innovative inventions, and so. Uh, that's because when you bring religion and science into a one, I feel like that's where you can usher in a, a, a grandiose society. Just like ancient Kemen, what people know as ancient Egypt. Religion and science, both hand in hand. And you got the United States, which takes religion and science and separates those two. And that's where I think you shouldn't separate those two because they're both one and the same. They both have their benefits. Like we all can agree that. I guess you're right about that. I didn't really think about China having so much technology and also Eastern philosophy. Their Eastern course. philosophy. Mm-hmm. And that's. that's- yeah, that's huge. That probably is why they that's they're why quite advanced country. <laughs> they they grew so much. And then a lot of times people neglect the fact that they take Albert Einstein as the greatest genius of the that world has ever known. But they never talk about the fact that Einstein was he had his uh his his belief in God. They don't talk about it. he was just not this scientific genius. He was a very esoteric uh thinker and he was just like, hey, he took things to another level because of his acknowledgement of the, the religious principles. But people don't talk about that because the science community is like, no, Einstein's ours. No, Einstein was just gave the world what he needed to give the world. And he took religion and science, but they don't talk about the religious part. You have to talk about these parts because they all play an instrumental uh, role in all of our lives. Yeah, and I feel more than anything here is just the... To come back to the whole of it, you know, what's the whole of it about? You know, what's the whole thing about uh, religious? What's the point of it there, you know? Um, To do good things, you know, what's wrong, you know, what's right. And really, even those stories from the Bible, analyze them and understand them for the moral of the story more than anything. Um, And just get in tune. And what do you do there at church? You pray. So praying is, is spending time by yourself, you know, it's very meditative and... Um, either way, you know, they've linked this also kind of like science and religion, people that pray and people who meditate, 
their breath rate is at the same rate. So it's going to be like five full breaths per minute. So you slow down when you breathe, um, when you're meditating or when you're praying. And in this prayer state, you become and you get into this parasympathetic response. Your body goes into a relaxed mode. You rest, you digest, you can process through your thoughts. Um, it's the opposite of fight or flight up and, you know, on the attack and you're seeing like a giant, whatever there are, animal out there and you got to fight and kill it and stuff like this. So coming back to the cave, you're going to relax. There's a fire. You just slow down now. There's no attack, you know. So coming into a prayer like state or meditation is going to help you to find that calmness. And um, I definitely feel like that's having that calmness to you is definitely going to be able to calm your thoughts, calm the world around you and allow you to uh, just be the best version of yourself and act like in a godlike manner in a scientific, you know, best human manner, you know. Tyler, did you want to add to anything? I'm uh, honestly sitting here trying to, you know, think about like what would the scientific um, action be similar to like prayer and meditation? You know exactly. I mean, when you when I think science and meditation, sci- I mean, that is science. It's a physiological response, you know. Mm. Things slow down. Your heart rate slows down. That's science. That's, you know, body. Are you asking if that's the, what would be the scientific approach to prayer? Or are you asking, would it, like, what's your question? I guess um, more like, you know, if, if you ask someone who's spiritual, how would they connect, right? It would be like, oh, through meditation. You ask someone, you know, in a religion, they'd say prayer or whatever, I guess. You know, in the science community, do they have okay. in actions? A, that... In the scientific community, because I mean, science is like geeks, you know? <laughs> so the most logical thing that makes sense for the human, I mean, if you're trying to be the best human being that you possibly can, most efficient, scientifically, and you know that there's a physiological response that slows your body down and allows you to process things quicker, more creative thoughts, uh, focus, you know, you know, um, in scientific kind of ways, I think that that's that's kind of the scientific way of looking at meditation. I can't really say prayer, but I could I can I could break it down like this for me. Okay. When you when you like what the Buddha says, we are what we think. All that arises from a thought, our thoughts make up who we are. Science can acknowledge that if I think I am a scientist, that I think that this tree does all these different things they could think, they're manifesting that. And like I said, they're slowly acknowledging the I fact think, that yeah. they, you have belief. to acknowledge that. Yeah, belief. It's all the same. I think once again, now, I, probably 20 years, 30 years from now, I think the science community, especially in the Western world, will finally say, hey, religion is not a bad thing. It's just, yeah, we don't agree because I can't see God. But at the same time, we are co-creators of this higher existence. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it is. But I just know that, hey, it's a higher existence. And uh, we're co-creators on this three-dimensional plane. And I think the scientific community could definitely uh, agree with that. I think they have to believe, acknowledge that meditation, even for me, it took me a while to be like, pray. Because my mind has been like, I don't believe in prayer. But I do believe in prayer. I believe in meditation because it's all one and the same. It's just prayer is, is used in a religious context. Meditation is used in like a more of a spiritual context. But they're both one and the same. Yeah, it's hard to, you know, we're all going to have different backgrounds. Some people are going to be religious. Some people are going to be uh, not religious. Some people are going to be Hindu, you know, and meditate or prayer, whatever. If that works for you, if that's something that you do, pray. And it's going to give you the same response. It's going to allow you to do great things you know if it's meditation meditate you know if it's not believing in god but finding spiritual or finding just peace and health and you know performance do that there's uh, one thing i'm going to add in there too um you know if you're one of the people who are maybe on the side of um using pharmaceuticals science. to yeah science. that's science <laughs> but science. you know you can see that <laughs> Through this conversation, you know, you can induce those same effects through prayer and meditation or any method that you choose. So, you know, just again, try to give it a little shot, you know, see what it see what happens when uh, when you do take that pharmaceutical, you know, it's supposed to do something to your nervous system. You can induce those same effects through breathing exercise, meditation or prayer. Yeah, I love the people that say, uh, I fear no man but God, but they fear coronavirus and they fear this. Like, this has to be like, you have to question, like, do you really believe that or are you just telling yourself that? And that's where I feel like your religious belief, not your belief, 
you as a person, you are failing yourself, your connectedness to God, because you're not truly believing in God's almightiness. And if you did, you would say, "How would I would use my abilities the best way I can, and I would utilize them through God, and so that way I can become the best that I can be." It's okay, like Tyler was just talking about pharmaceuticals. It's okay to take that stuff if you feel like it's going to help you. It's going to help you. It's okay to blend both of these parties together to make a better you. Yeah, and pharmaceuticals and stuff, it's science, you know, and there are also different ways to do things in your body scientifically, you know, optimum nutrition, sleeping, you know, um, if it's, it doesn't have to be meditation, it can just be mindfulness and pausing and slowing down and coming into that parasympathetic state that your body physiologically does to slow down your body rest and digest in the state um then use it like that you know yeah tyler did you want to add anything uh you know simply um as we're talking about you know the science side of it i was just sitting here thinking oh yeah um that makes a lot of sense because like say even drinking coffee is a stimulant right that stimulant will make you you know feel hyper or maybe like the same feeling of like anxiety right so if you can slow yourself down through I, you know, I don't know what the pharmaceutical equivalent would be, but, you know, personally, I use breathing exercises or anything like that. But if you can just slow down your your nervous system, essentially, because it's your thoughts going everywhere, you know. Control. Yeah, controlling, you know, your thoughts and yourself, you won't necessarily ever have to rely on anything external from you. All right, guys. So I guess to sum everything up, um, we broke down religion, broke down science to the best of our abilities or to the best of our knowledge. Um, do you guys feel that my final question is, do you guys feel that religion and science, does it serve its purpose on the planet? And do you think it has done the world a due diligence for the benefit of humans? Yes. (laughs) We're going to say, yeah. Um, you know, I definitely think that, um, one, as humans, we create divisions where we don't need to. We are given the ability to judge, but we use it in the wrong ways. We know it feels bad to judge, you know, or to be judged, I should say, but then we go and judge other people, right? But like the thing is, again, science and then, you know, the religion, it's all just a way to believe in something and understand how things work uh, external from yourself or even internally. So, you know, again, it is all belief at the end of the day. What do you choose to believe in? And what do you, how are you going to live your life, you know? All right, Will. Show me your beliefs and I will show you your future because what you believe in is what you're going to manifest. You know, if you are depressed, if you're thinking you're depressed and you're thinking that the pain pills are going to help you, they're going to help you. If you are depressed and you're thinking, man, there's no way out of this, there's going to be no way out of this. Mm. If you are anxiety and man, I'm really scared right now. Oh, I can't do this. You cannot do it. If you say, oh, I'm anxiety, I can't, oh, wait, let me try to calm down. Oh, meditation works. I believe this works. Let me try it. It works. Oh, it works, actually. Yeah, because you believed it. So Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, that's, that's, I don't know, man. That's science and it's religion. I think science and religion are of two worlds. They're the same thing, kind of, you know. Um, But I think that the way that we've categorized it, separated it, science is separate from the religion put it on this side um there are two things that i think that should be used together and consists of very similar things just different understanding different ways of looking at things different beliefs so uh like i said form without form man if it works for you try it if it doesn't work you don't have to do it give it a try though so I guess we uh, all can agree that it has served its purpose and, and it has benefited humans, and I totally agree with that. Guys, um, that was an interesting podcast. I think that was really, very, I, I wish we could have made it a little funnier, but hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I really did. I learned a couple of different things. Um, our tea has been almost done, I guess. Almost. <laughs> almost. All right. Well, guys, um, until then, we'll see you on the ne- I'll see you on the next podcast podcast i talk so fast it's crazy it's your boy spence crosby aka faiska i'm out william o taylor go grab some tea man fill your cup and tyler wellness here don't forget to make yourself a priority peace